Hello everyone! So last week I asked my Instagram followers who happen to be science or math students to email me in order to help me on a special project. So my goal was to gather a big amount of study tips especially for maths or sciences. I finally got around to gather tons of study tips tailored for maths and sciences. So all the tips you're going to see here are either from high school students with specialized courses on maths or from college students who are taking engineering classes, who are in medical school, who are taking biology, applied maths and sciences and so on. You can check the description box for timestamps related to all the topics we're going to discuss in this video and without further ado, let's get started. So we are going to start with basic tips or the basic attitude you should have to study for this type of classes. So, Sarawad Habi says that you have to do math like you solve puzzles. Try giving yourself a small treat after solving a math problem. On the other hand, Inish Barbosa says that if you have formulas, try to understand them instead of just remembering them. Try to understand the meanings of the results you get. Regarding the attitude you should have to become a math student, Marta Gomez says that you should have a balanced life and make yourself a priority. Most of my classmates think I'm crazy because I go to the gym five times a week, I sleep at least seven to eight hours and I never study on Saturday afternoons or Sundays. When exams come around, I keep the same routine and it's all about having a schedule that works and knowing that you can't perform academically if you aren't good in a physical and emotional way. Additionally, Marta also says that you should not pressure yourself. At least in medicine, we have a lot of pressure from our professors and from ourselves since we are going to have people's lives in our hands and we want to be perfect in everything. We are humans and we have unproductive days, emotions, personal problems. It's better to take an afternoon off to unwind than to spend that afternoon looking at your notes, doing almost nothing but hating every second. Especially when dealing with anxiety in exam season, make sure you acknowledge your feelings. Also, it's really important to understand that, specifically in maths and sciences, knowing your basics is fundamental. The A-Files says that I have been a tutor every once in a while, and what I've noticed when people have difficulties in a particular topic is that those difficulties arise from a blank in previous knowledge. Maths and sciences are very progressive. Being able to identify the specific thing you don't understand is key to staying on top of your classes. Finally, I also wanted to add Hava's tips and she says that being confused is normal and necessary. It is very important to be persistent with your study routine. At the beginning, you are probably going to be confused with many information, hard concepts, abstract ideas that you don't even know how to picture in your head. But we've all been there. That is part of the process and it won't last forever. Learning is all about finding a way out of that chaos. Also, you can't figure everything out in a single day. Don't be hard on yourself if you find it hard to understand some concepts or formulas. Memorize or remember how to properly apply on problem solving in a few hours. Your brain needs some time to make meaningful connections with that new information, with everything you already know, and place it into long-term memory. You'll probably need to consult your textbook examples and explanations more than once. That is normal and expected. Now I want to cover some tips regarding these student study routines. Luna says that you should take a random notebook and use it as a dictionary. Write at the top of the page what theme you are studying and a book chapter after you read everything and create topics with only the definitions of the terms that you marked with that first color. Colleen says that all classes are different, so studying styles varies from subject or course. She says, and I quote, In my major, which is biology, our professors would provide us a copy of the course outline which contains the topics for the whole semester. In reading, we use the books or ebooks prescribed by the instructor and scientific journals for the recent updates. From reading, we are now able to make outlines for us to go through to master the topic. We also make flashcards for courses that need a lot of memorization and my maps can also be useful specifically in systemic pathways in anatomy and physiology and in biochemistry. Mariana says that finding someone who thinks in the same way as you and has a similar work ethic can be incredible for joint setting sessions. 
If that person shares your classes, that can be even better, as you'll have the same references and notes, which can help you complement previously learned information better. Mathilde also gives us three very specific study tips regarding your process for studying for maths. So she says that I mark on a paper every time I come across either a really hard exercise or an exercise that has some kind of twist that makes me think I should do it again right before the test. I go through that list the day before my exam and repeat those exercises. I also mark with a bright highlighter key information that I come across while practicing exercises. Either that's a method on how to solve them or something that could be easily forgettable. I mark things I think I should remind myself again before the exam. And that's what I do. The day before my exam, I have a look at the exercises I did and read what I highlighted. Finally, I write on a paper the formulas I need and I use them in practice exercises. Chanela also reminds us that we should focus on our weaknesses. In exams or by doing past papers, you can find out your weak points. You just have to relearn it and do more practice questions on it. Also, Chanel says that it's really helpful when you've done your readings before class. Especially in biology, every lesson is filled with so many new words. By reading your lessons beforehand, you'll get used for it. Also, when you're in a gap vacation, if you're taking any of sciences and maths, you can build the foundations for them by reading related books and by using related online resources. Finally, Chanel reminds us that you need to get through with equations, so make formula sheets for each and every lesson. You can use post-it notes and stick them on a place where you can see them. Also, you can use flashcards. Write the equation in one of the sides and write an example in the other side. Francesca reminds you to also use online resources. Asking your teacher to resolve your doubts and give you extra exercises is always best, since they'll likely be the one testing or examining you. However, let's be honest, not all teachers are good at teaching math, especially in high school. If that's your case, and you can rely on a lot of resources that you can find online. The more advanced you are, the less you'll find, but even with really advanced classes, you can usually find notes or slides from other universities, study materials, and it is worth to try and search some keywords on YouTube to see if someone made a video on the topic or recorded a lecture. With more standard subjects, there's a lot more to find. You can find a lot of videos on YouTube or you can use sites that offer online courses. Lastly, there are some sites and communities solely dedicated to maths with a forum part where you can ask questions to other users. Ava also says that you should mark your thoughts on the margins because something that makes sense today might not be as clear tomorrow and because through the process of writing down you are forcing your mind to examine your understanding so this will reveal any holes in your understanding in case there are any. Also Sahin reminds us that it's very important to be consistent. So you need to study your science subjects each and every day even if it's only for 30 minutes each day for each subject. Regarding your class attitude, Fernanda says that in case of practical classes or lab, it's important to keep a lab notebook where you can register the results of your experiments. Sometimes the procedures provided by the teachers are only recipes and do not explain all the procedures, calculus and explanations related to that particular experiment. Chanela also adds that if you really can't understand something in class, never think that she'll give a try on it later. Raise your hand and ask it from your teacher. They'll probably have some simple and easy ways to understand it. If not, you can do self-study by using online resources. Marta says that you should never be afraid to ask for help. Most teachers will be available to answer your doubts. What I recommend is, however, to not just go to them with a question or a blank exercise, but show somehow that you've tried to think about it on your own before going to ask them. And also, if possible, to go to them as soon as there's something you don't understand and not wait until a week before a test or an exam. This way you will avoid unpleasant experiences that will make you afraid to ask for help again. You can also ask a classmate to help you, but I always suggest you to be sure you've tried your best to solve your doubts on your own before asking. There's little use in just having answers given to you before even making an effort to find a solution. 
Finally, I want to leave you with actually the first tip that was emailed to me by Chanel and she says, never think you can't do this and that it's too hard. Yes, science and maths are quite hard, but, but if you work hard, they will probably be doable. If you want to take your math and science knowledge to the next level, nothing beats taking all of the theory you learn in class and putting it into practice by solving problems and seeing how math actually works. That's what today's sponsor Brilliant does for you. Brilliant is the platform where you can find hundreds of problems with step-by-step -step guides and interactive quizzes to help you actively improve your knowledge. They basically present you a problem, then break it into small steps that show you the explanations behind the solving process and finally wrap it up in a nice conclusion. As we've seen in this video, mastering the basics is fundamental to avoid that snowball effect that prevents you from learning further concepts effectively. So the Mathematical or Geometry Fundamentals classes or the Science Essentials class will come in handy if you feel like you need to get a hang on the basics first. So to finally get better at math and start doing stuff at a practical level, you can go to brilliant.org slash Mariana and sign up for free. If you are lucky enough to be one of the first 200 people that go to that link, you will get 20% off the annual premium subscription and all information will be linked down below. I hope you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to see more of this content and I'll see you next week. Bye!